Hey, it's Joseph here. Have you ever struggled to navigate inside a SketchUp? Sometimes I get stuck in the walls, struggle to go through something, and sometimes stuck somewhere that you have no idea where you are, or simply take a very long time to get to where you want to go. There's nothing more nerve-wracking than having someone over your shoulder watching your screen and see you struggle through navigating inside a SketchUp. So I want to introduce a wide range of navigation tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you call it. So tip number one, get a mouse. And it must be that not just any mouse, actually a mouse with scroll wheel and it is clickable. The magic mouse won't do any magic for you and other gaming mouse that has 300 macro possible buttons won't do anything for you either. All you need is a simple mouse with a scroll wheel and the fact that you can click on them. It doesn't even have to be this fancy either and that will do the job just fine. However, my personal pick is ergonomic and wireless and non-gaming mouse. I'll leave a affiliate link for a Logitech mouse that I usually recommend to other people in the description. Since I already have variety of Logitech products, I just keep on using them. Sponsorship Logitech, maybe? Sometimes it's kind of annoying seeing a person fumbling around the trackpad trying to zoom in and orbit. And because mouse is almost crucial for many other software other than SketchUp, so it kind of makes sense if you're trying to do this professionally or if you invest a lot of time in using those softwares. Trying to learn SketchUp without a mouse is almost like trying to learn drums without drumsticks or trying to learn how to cook without a proper knife knife and learning how to you get the point so get a mouse with the scroll wheel that is clickable and thank me later so tip number two point and zoom SketchUp understands where you're trying to zoom in and out from so depending on where the cursor is inside a SketchUp it will zoom in and out differently especially your object is very far you must point to the object to zoom in quicker otherwise if you're pointing at somewhere outside, you'll be zooming in to somewhere else. So make sure you point at the object and start zooming in. Tip number three, use the keyboard. Navigation inside of SketchUp is two-handed business. If somebody is using SketchUp and actually have their left hand stuck in their pocket, it's basically very easy giveaway. They're not really proficient with SketchUp. The most basic navigation feature of SketchUp is probably to scroll in and out to zoom and hold down the scroll wheel to orbit, as well as if you hold down shift key whilst orbiting, you can pan around as well. This is a feature that will get you from a skipper level to a captain inside of SketchUp C. Tip number four, modifier keys. This is related to the previous one. Modifier keys are shift, control, alt keys, and option and command key if you're on a Mac side. Basically those function keys that you add in with other keys to execute different functions like control C for copy or command C for copy sort of thing. And in fact, if you're actually in the middle of orbiting, if you look at the bottom of the screen as I orbit, it will change to drag to orbit whilst I'm orbiting and then shift to pan. So if I hold down shift key, I'll be able to pan around and then control to suspend gravity. I can actually suspend gravity somehow, which is meaning that you can tilt. The good use case scenario for this function is to make your scene a bit more dynamic. Perhaps not for this building, but when you're doing a product shot or a furniture shot or interior scene where you want to make the scene a bit more dynamic and you can tilt it and make the scene a bit more interesting. Tip number five, use short keys. Look at your keyboard and hit Z or Z if you're across the pond. And as you do that, you'll activate zoom tool. And if you look on the bottom right hand corner, it will say field of view and it is 35 degree. At this point, you can hold your left mouse button and move upwards to zoom in and down to zoom out. And also, if you look at the bottom of the screen, it will say up is in, down is out. 
and then shift to change field of view. So if I hold down shift key while it's in here, I can actually change the field of view. You can look at the bottom right hand corner of my screen. You will see that my field of view is changing accordingly. As we started at 35, I can just type in 35 DEG enter and it'll snap back to where I started from. So if I jump back to one of the interior scene, you'll see that I have already set it up as field of view of 60 degrees. If I make it to 35 DEG enter. So the view is gonna be quite tight with 35 degrees. So I can just change back to 60 degrees by typing 60 DEG enter. So one trick here is to type in focal length if you know a little bit of photography. So in my case, I can just type in 50 mm for 50 millimeter enter and then it will just jump into standard focal length. Whereas if I type in 24 millimeter, which is kind of wide angle, you'll see the wide angle shot. And then if I type in 100 mil for telephoto, you'll see that everything's quite tight in there. So you can either type in DEG for degrees and millimeters for focal length of a lens. So in my case, I'm gonna go back to 60 degrees because that was the degree that I was using. 60 DEG, enter, and it will be the Y shot again. Tip number six is walk. You can activate walk mode by just clicking on this icon here, or you can go to camera and find walk right here. And I actually have assigned Shift C as the shortcut for it. Because W key is actually not assigned by default, you can assign W for walk function as well. Because I have W assigned as weld function of an extension, as a camera walk, I just assign shift to C for walk function and it just works fine for me but if you find W more useful you can assign that as well so as soon as you activate that tool you can just hold down your left mouse button and and then move down to go backwards and up to go forwards if you look at the bottom of the screen you'll see click and drag to walk control is to run so you can go a lot faster and then shift to move vertically or sideways. So you can just kind of change your position and the eye height. And then alt to disable collision detection. So I cannot walk through objects normally. However, if I hold down alt key, I'll be able to just go through objects and not bump into them. And then there are a couple more tricks inside a walk. So if you look at the bottom right hand corner, it will say five feet and eight inches. And it tells me which eye height that I am currently positioned. So I can just go and type in six feet. Then I'll be raised slightly upwards, 10 feet. And then I'll go up even more. And if I type in something like 50 feet, then I'll just go shoot above the surface that I was initially positioned. If I activate the tool again, it will just flag and say it is 15 feet and eight inches. And one useful thing here is that I can actually go negative figures as well. So if I type in negative 20 feet, enter, and I'll be shooting downwards. And if I activate the tool again, it will just tell me that I am 14 feet and four inches above. So at this point, I can just type in five feet again to drop down to the floor. So there is that nifty trick if you need to go up and down in the same position. Although walking around with a mouse like this can be difficult at times, sometimes it's very useful to use this function because if you were to scroll and zoom in like so, you'll see that your zooming is staggered and the smooth motion of walking is much more helpful in understanding the space. Therefore, when you're doing a presentation, it's easier to understand the space, especially for people who's never seen the model before to just use the walk function so that your transition is a lot smoother as opposed to a zoom, which is kind of stepping or jumping uh, of an image. And also, if you try to orbit, you'll see that the cursor changes to an eye and you should be able to just look around. So the way I use this tool is just to move forward and then I can look around 
to see the position that I want to move forward to. And then I can just use that function again without changing the tool. So I can just navigate quickly around orbiting and panning around and then shift C to just go into walk mode and then look around and then move forward and then continue along the path that I initially wanted to go. So I do this all the time because presenting this way is very, very useful and easier to understand for someone who's seeing the model for the first time. And also it is useful when I'm trying to fine tweak the view and the scenes, which brings me to the next point. Tip number seven, save the scenes. First of all, spend some time and assign meaningful names to your scenes. In my case, I have gone overall one, overall two, so that I can see, switch through the views and show my overall layout of the space and then view one and then it will start into a position and then view two will move forward and we can just continue to discuss different points of this specific project. So they are in sequence and then I can just keep going down and continue my presentation of the live model. So it would be useful to assign those scenes, thinking about what you're gonna talk about, what are the things that you want to present to your client or your boss or your colleagues. It would be useful to set those things up so you don't risk of getting stuck somewhere or struggle to get out of the places as I have mentioned before. And have them named so that you can recognize on the fly when you're doing a live presentation. And if you have wondered off because you wanted to explain something differently to that view, you can always click on that same view again to snap back in position. And getting in the habit of setting these scenes will help you focus on those specific areas whilst modeling as well. Tip number eight is to hide. And I don't mean that you hide from presentation, I mean that you hide objects that are in your way. You'll see that if I were to go in overall view that my roof would be in the way so therefore I have hidden them so I can actually see the overall layout. I can just hit shift U for unhiding everything and if I need to hide something I can just hit shift H for hiding object. And in this case I have hidden the upper level as well so you can just kind of see everything I might have hidden these beams as well. So I can just hide all of those on the fly and then navigate around and show what I need to show. And if I'm under the roof where everything is needing to come back in, I can just hit shift to U to unhide everything and everything should be coming back into the scene. So these are actually custom shortcuts that I have assigned Shift H to hide everything and Shift U to unhide all. And if you're actually interested in a complete list of my shortcuts, I'm going to leave accessible in my Patreon page for my supporters so you can head that way which I will have a link in the description for you to follow. Tip number 9, Back Edges. Back Edges is something similar to X-ray views. So if you have used x-ray views before, you'll kind of understand what the back edges are. I personally don't find x-ray views so useful because back edges actually have shortcuts assigned by default whereas x-ray doesn't. So I just learned to just use a shortcut for getting the same functionality. So if you actually hit K on your keyboard, you will be enabling back edge function. If I were to look here and then hit K and you will start to see all the edges as dashes that are located behind the face normally you wouldn't see. This is useful especially if you're trying to put an object behind. So if I had a cube that I wanted to just snap into a position and normally I cannot move this behind this column on that corner on the other side. However, if I enable K and then I should be able to find that edge and then snap right there and then I can just turn that off immediately. So it is just useful to snap an object but it kind of helps you not to navigate. And finally tip number 10, 3D mouse. I decided to add this as a very last tip because I think this is sort of a last resort. First of all, it'll cost you and it is not cheaper than any odd mouse. It is much more expensive than regular mouse therefore you will be investing a lot more money. And whether you get actually money worth, I am not so sure. A lot of people actually expect this to be
be replacing your regular mouse, which is not true. It is recommended to use with your keyboard hand or your left hand if you're actually righty. I use it on my left hand and it is sitting right here on my left hand side and I use it instead of the keyboard. So you will be using your mouse to move your cursor around and then you only move the screen by using the 3D mouse. And I have recently come across a very good review of 3D mouse by Master SketchUp. I will leave the link in the description for you to watch that video if you're interested in. However, let me just say brief things based on my personal experience and opinions. So I actually have owned this mouse for several years now. I actually never found it so useful whilst modeling because my left hand has to remain on the keyboard to utilize all the shortcuts and just moving that hand back and forth between the 3D mouse and the keyboard really wasn't working for me. And I can already move around SketchUp model at ease using all of these tips that I just mentioned to you, which are free. I don't really need additional help of 3D mouse. If you actually have come across this product for the first time, it will blow your mind because it allows you to freely swim around the product. And let me just just demonstrate so I can just move around model in many different ways so that my mouse remains constant and I can probably even follow up these steps at ease. And then look down from these handrails if I needed to. And also as your model gets heavier and heavier, you'll notice that 3D mouse will kind of struggle. I think this model is actually borderline struggling and not struggling. So if you're actually working with very small model, maybe a product design or furniture, I've seen it very, very useful for those people. So you might consider, but for my particular workflow, it didn't really fit. However, I have been promoting this for people who's using Enscape because 3D Mouse works very well with Enscape and, and there's nothing that is better for Enscape navigation than 3D Mouse. And it is even better than using VR controls to move around. If you just have 3D Mouse and VR headsets, I can just freely swim around my model without any problem. And I have much detailed review on that part for Enscape navigation on my other videos. So I'll leave the link in the description for that video as well. You guys can check it out. And I guess this does become the very last tip or maybe just a bit of advice. Uh, let's just put it as tip number 11, the last one. Sorry, I thought the last one was the last anyways it is to practice i hope you can just take all of this digest and perhaps practice all of these i know all of these tricks by heart so i don't have to really guess what the shift does or the control does it just comes out of me naturally uh, my muscle memory is all there i'm just hitting those short keys without even second thinking if i want to look around that way my left hand is already hitting shift c and my right hand is already scrolling around and dragging around. So the muscle memory is going to be key. Do practice. Make sure you have all of this down so that you can just freely swim around without the assistance of anything else and so that you seem very fluent with SketchUp navigation skills. So this video is slightly longer than I have anticipated. I noticed that when I was writing down the script, I kind of thought about it and I was just writing down things that I have learned over many years. Uh, now that I think about it, it's actually more than a decade. So that's been a long time, SketchUp. Anyways, it is time to go. Please leave a comment if you have your own set of tricks up your sleeves. And if you have liked this content, please like and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.